Hey, Sand Springs. My name is Lisa Valencia. I am part of the broadcast team here that brings this wirecast to you weekly. And I'm also an assistant volunteer with our Oasis Young Adult Group. I just want to share with y'all something God recently did in my life. So the Oasis Group went to Upper Room in Dallas on Pentecost Sunday, and it was amazing. The teaching was great. The worship was awesome. The Holy Spirit just filled the room that day. We saw healings. And in one part of the service, the teacher, so excited, and he was like, guys, y'all know I wasn't always like this. Like, this is completely Holy Spirit. And he's just like, I feel like there's someone here that needs to know you're allowed to be that new creation. And so we begin to pray, and I'm just up and ready to accept whatever the Holy Spirit has, because I know, like, God, you've given me this passion, and I need to voice it, but every time I get the opportunity, I just shut down. And so we begin praying, and Jess, one of our leaders for Oasis, lays her hands on me, and she's just like... As, she, as we're praying and I'm trying to receive, she's just like, Lise, let it go. Lise, you've got to release it. And I'm just like, what is she talking about? And a couple of days after I even asked her, I'm like, I remember you prayed this. And what did, you, like, what did you mean? And she's just like, Holy Spirit just told me to tell you that. And I was just kind of like, Lord, what do I need to release? Fast forward, we get the awesome opportunity to go to Power and Love. It's a evangelism conference in Watonga, Texas at Lifestyle Church. It was so powerful from the moment we started and the one specific moment that just really stood out to me was we're on day two and in this session uh, Todd White starts teaching on about like unforgiveness and like how we are in a spiritual battle there's a very real enemy that likes to steal kill and destroy to the point that he will just cause pain and suffering we begin to blame those things on the Lord versus knowing like hey that's an attack from the enemy and that just was the first hit to this wall that I've had in, inside of me. We begin to talk and he's talking about like division in the church. And these are things that I've struggled with, like wrestled with the Lord. I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to do with this? And at the end, I began to realize that there's unforgiveness in my life that I just need to get rid of. And he's just like, if there's anyone here that just wants to like, you know, break off that unforgiveness before he even had a chance to say, raise your hands, my hands are already up. I'm just like, Lord, I don't want to hold off to this anymore. You've paid too high a price for me and I don't have a right to hold anything against these people. You love them. And every time I would think about it and be like, Lord, what do I need to do? He would just be like, you need to forgive and you need to bless. And that moment I just like started praying and I'm just like, Lord, like this is like, I don't want it anymore. I don't want the unforgiveness anymore. And I go and I began to feel like my hands shake. And I was just like, I was just like, I could feel release. And as he's come, as we're praying, the pastor's praying. Um, and he's just like, you know, unforgiveness must leave in Jesus name now. And he's just breaking it off. And I'm just like, Lord, I don't want it anymore. Like, take it, please take it. I began to put my hands on my head because I just wanted to pray over this new mindset because I'm someone that I was like, I'm going to get deliverance and then I'm going to pick it back up. And I don't want that, Lord. Like, Lord, if you take it, I know you're going to take it. And I begin to just go with my hands on my head and I'm just like, Holy Spirit, it's okay. Holy Spirit, it's okay. You can take it. All of these things that like, I held inside just break off in that moment. And I just went from crying to just sobbing, just sobbing, just like repentant of just holding all these things against these people, repentant of like blaming God for all of the pain and struggle and people that were no longer in my life that I thought were going to be in my life for, for the long haul. This deliverance was so amazing. This all happened Father's Day weekend. And why that's significant, I lost my dad nine years ago to suicide. I held this anger towards my dad. I was just like, anytime I thought of him, I was just angry and mad and just thought of the painful memories. And I remember asking the Lord, what do you want me to do? And he was like, you've got to forgive. And I was just like, Lord, he's dead. What do I, what do you mean forgive? What, is, how, what difference does that make? That weekend, just, you know, letting the Lord have that unforgiveness in my heart. I was able to go that versus Sunday, went on Monday, Juneteenth, a day to celebrate freedom and just spend a sweet time just remembering my dad. I remember going to the cemetery and I wasn't mad anymore. I wasn't angry. I wasn't thinking of like, if I would have done this different or if he'd done something different, none of this was happened. It was just a time to honor my dad who had been the first one in my life to share the gospel. The first one to tell me, hey, Jesus loves you so much, Mija. If there's someone here that you're struggling with unforgiveness, please reach out. Someone will, will be here to like be with you and pray with you through these things. If you see me in the hallways and you wanna hear more about power and love in my experience, we'll grab a coffee and find some chairs. <laughs> but we're gonna get ready to worship. I love you guys, Jesus loves you more, and I'll see you next time.